Welcome back, everybody. So, after the week off, we had a crazy week of matches last week. Um, I'm not going to talk about those right now, though, because we're going to be talking about week number seven. I do apologize for last week. Um, uh, it was an extremely busy weekend with work, and then it led into um, basically an all, you know, the whole weekend with um, my oldest and one of my very best friends in the world's wedding. Um, I was in that, so I was very involved, super busy. So we are back here for June Joust, week number two of it. So we had a bunch of upsets last week. Um, you know, we have some heroes out of the rotation. You know, we got hero pools. So um, Sommer gone, Tracer gone, Zenyatta gone, and Reinhardt gone for the entirety of the June Joust. Um, you know, next couple weeks and then the tournament as well. So um, we're seeing a lot of Winston from some teams. We're seeing some double shield. Um, you know, which double shield is it's definitely seemed more effective um, last week, you know, but if both teams do opt into a more divey style, then they've been playing that as well. A lot of Echo, um, you know, I've seen some Kree, um, Ash, of course. So, we did have a couple of matches today. Um, pretty easy predictions on these. Uh, you know, Dallas and Gladiators looking like two of the best teams. You know, Fuel, your reigning champs. Gladiators on now a three-game winning streak. You know, their only losses were to Dallas and San Francisco. And they looked, you know, pretty good even in those losses. So, uh, London and Vancouver combined have a total of zero victories. They're 0-12 combined now after today's matches. So, um, you know, definitely would have picked Gladiators and Fuel. And no surprise that it was 3-0 um, on each side of it. So... Again, we saw some Arisa, we saw some um, Winston. You know, I think as we as we get closer and closer, we're going to see more double shield, um, just because it's really really good with you know probably the Batiste and a lot of um, you know Brigida, maybe flexing into Mercy on some other roles. But uh, anyways, we do have a bunch of matches coming up this weekend. So starting out east. We've got Shanghai Dragons taking on LA Valiant. This is Valiant's first look of the uh, Joust. Shanghai did play last week, going 1-1. One one. Um, going Shanghai here. Valiant, you know, in the main melee, they look like the worst team in the league. Um, I don't really expect too much to change here. Um, you know, hopefully this meta favors them a little bit more. You know, maybe, um, you know, their Tracer play in particular was pretty atrocious. So, um... You know, with Tracer being out of rotation, maybe they can kind of lean on some other stuff, but definitely taking Shanghai to win this one pretty easily. Uh, then you got New York Excel taking on the Seoul Dynasty. So New York had an interesting week. Um, they went 1-1, one and one, scored a big upset win, but then did lose their second match. And then we have Seoul, who has not played yet in the June Joust. So I'm going to take New York here. I'm going to go to New York probably a 3-1. to one. Um, New York is a, they're a hard team to predict. You know, they beat Philly, um, then they lost to the charge. Um, so a little bit of a toss up here, you know, Seoul, it's pretty difficult to predict as well, especially since they have not played yet. Um, you know, the two team, two of the teams who haven't played yet in Dallas and Gladiators did look good today. Um, so if this one's going to be coaching, it's going to come down to coaching for me. You know, if Seoul comes out with a really nice plan, um, and, you know, they they have a good read on the meta. They have a good composition to start and then can pivot if need be. Um, you know, then I could definitely see them winning it. But I'm going to go with New York just because I like what I'm seeing from this young team. I think they're coming together a little bit. Like I said, they did lose to the charge, but the charge also looked much improved. You know, you have an old standby in Jonak. Um, you know, Flora was definitely a standout this last week, you know, really coming alive on those hit scan rolls. Um so, I think New York, they're probably going to be a bit up and down all season long, but when, when they get on a roll, they can they can be pretty dangerous, and I think this is a pretty solid meta for them. Then, we go back to the West, where you got Houston Outlaws taking on London Spitfire, so Spitfire are wrapping up their matches with this one, you know, this will be their last one for the June Joust, um, they're 0-7 on the season, 0-3 in the Joust, so... I'm hoping for their sakes they can get a win here, but I'm going to pick Houston. You know, they did lose their first match out of the gate, um, but then did bounce back with a nice victory against Florida um, last week. So 
Uh, Houston still looks like a, quite a good team on this meta. You know, they can play Ash. Happy's really good on that. You know, they can play uh, Echo. Dante's really, really good at that. So I think this is a good meta for them. You know, they've showed that they can kind of play. They can play the Winston comps. They can also, um, you know, they can also go to those Risa, you know, double shield types and still have some success. So I'm going to take Houston here, uh, probably at 3 0. Um, unfortunately for Spitfire, they just. They've had a pretty brutal stretch of teams to play against, but they're still not playing that well. So, you know, a combination of all that definitely taking the Outlaws. Then you got San Fran Shock taking on the Toronto Defiant. So, uh, Toronto had a nice victory in their first match last week, but then took a pretty bad loss in their second one. Um, they got beat up pretty good by the Uprising. So, I'm going to go with San Francisco here. Um, I think that they're going to have learned, you know, from some of their mistakes, um, you know, not even making, not even making the May Melee, you know, Final Four, they lost in the qualifiers to, you know, to the eventual champion in Dallas, um, but I still think they're going to be extremely powerful coming into this matchup, I don't, I don't see many areas where Toronto has advantages, um, you know, I think Toronto's going to be a solid team, I think they might be my placeholder for this season, um, you know, they're, they're like the gatekeeper, um, if, you know, if you play badly or if you're just a bad team, you know, some combination of the two, um, you know, if you don't show up to play, they'll, they'll beat you, you know, they'll take you down. But if you're a good team and you play well, you're going to beat them, you know, kind of Philly fusion from season two, um, you know, it was one of the teams I always go for, like, uh, go back to for that, you know, a little bit of Houston in season one, you know, where they're a solid team, you know, they're not bad. They've got some good players. Um, like I said, you don't bring your A game, they can definitely beat you, but I do think San Francisco will bring their A game here. I think they're going to, um, you know, go on a nice little run in the joust. I would be surprised if they didn't, so taking San Francisco in that one, it, I think Toronto gets a map off them, though. Then we have an interesting one in Atlanta Rain taking on LA Gladiators. So like I said, the Gladiators dominated Vancouver. Vancouver's 0-4, or, sorry, 0-5 now, um, you know, haven't looked especially good. Atlanta looked very dominant last week, um, you know, again, one of their matches, you know, they, they just smashed London, again, London winless, so, um, you know, two teams that are looking good, I've seen a bit more of Atlanta, and I'm gonna go with Atlanta, um, you know, obviously, you know, Gladiator Homer here, but, um, like I said, Atlanta looks really good. Um, even in seasons two and three, the Rain were very much a team of, you know, that you could have called them a gatekeeper as well. But they were a team that if they got in the right meta and the right state of mind, they were really, really good. You know, season two, they got on, they caught an absolute fire towards the end of the year. You know, they carried that over into a win. They were the only team that beat the Shock, you know, in the postseason that year. They sent them down to the loser's bracket. Obviously, you know, history from there, but um, they look like they're getting hot right now. You know, Hawk, Gator, you know, super nice tank combo. Um, I think Gator's Orisa is probably his best tank at this point. You know, his pulls are extremely good, and he does not get caught out of position. Um, you know, Pelican is an absolute ascending star, so I think they've got a little bit more firepower. They've got a little bit more confidence, and I think this meta suits them a little bit more than the Gladiators. Um, I, you know, I think if it was even more Winston, like if it was super Winston centric, I would lean to gladiators because of Muse, but if we're playing a lot of, you know, Arisa slash, you know, maybe a double shield too with the Sigma, um, or even if they're, you know, you pairing her with a diva or another tank like that, I think Atlanta's a little bit better here and they win a close entertaining match. Then New York Excel are taking on the Valiant. I'm going to go with the Excel here again. If they do beat Soul, you know, this would basically be their chance, you know, beat Valiant, they're three and one, and you know, that's gonna get them into the qualifiers for the joust. So a uh, very important matchup here, and even if they you know if they lose their first one and then they win that one two and two might, you know, depending on map count and all that stuff, you know, it might be able to sneak you in. So again, gonna go with New York. Valiant have given me or any and everyone else no reasons to pick them. Um so pretty straightforward on that one. Jonax is going to get a lot of kills. The DPS will probably run run rampant. Taking XL for sure in that one. And then Soul Dynasty takes on the Shanghai Dragons. Again, Shanghai didn't look amazing. Um, you know, their first week out. 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the dragons, though. Um, the dynasty are such a. I don't know if this meta will really fit them too much. Um, Marisa definitely not. You know, Jester's favorite tank to play in the world. Um, they've shown a little bit of. Prophet hasn't impressed me that much. Um, on Echo, since since she's been introduced. Um, so I just I don't feel great about the dynasty here. Um, we're we're gonna see, you know we're gonna see Shanghai for real on this matchup though. I feel like we're gonna get a really good gauge of if if they're good or if they're not as good in this meta. Um, because honestly, it's kind of hard to tell from week one. The East was super it was super back and forth. You know the 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 Spark were really the only team that kind of okay this these guys look good. You know they look super comfortable. So. I do think Dragons are, you know, just a better team a bit overall. Um, you know, I, I think that an underrated part of their game is their coaching staff. They really, really game plan well. Um, and sometimes that's that's kind of Soul's issue where they come out, if they come out flat, they can't really adjust. Um, you know, and, and I'm not putting that on coaching as much as, you know, they're not a team that is as good at, um, you know, mid-match adjustments. So kind of take Dragons there, but I think it's a really interesting match, you know. It could really go either way. Next, you've got Toronto taking on Houston back in the West. I'm going to go with a little bit of an upset here. I'm going to go Toronto. I Toronto, like I said, I had them like 14, 15-ish power rankings wise before the season. But I, I really think they're right around that 10. Even though I think that you know Houston has been better this season, they have a higher ceiling. I think this is a little bit of a trap match for them. Um, you know, Defiant, they've got some of those players like Sato, um, you know, Ivy, the the like that they haven't really, you know, they're either Philly outcasts or, you know, they've been around the block a little bit on a different team. Um, but, but honestly, I, I like their team. And Houston, I just, I still don't fully trust them. You know, this is a new Houston. I get that. But it's more of a gut feeling. You know, I like to try to pick a one upset per week or a couple. Um, you know, we obviously had a bunch of them last week. Um, but for some reason, I think Toronto is going to, they're going to get a little, they're going to start flying under the radar a little bit. You know, a couple of losses, like falling off a bit. I think they're going to bounce back. Get off to a really good start. Houston's going to, you know, they're going to make a push, make it close. But in the end, going to go for an upset here and say Toronto just barely edges them out. Then we got Vancouver versus Atlanta. I do not think this will be an upset. I think Atlanta wins this one pretty easily. Um, Vancouver has support issues just keeping those guys up. Um, I feel like they've kind of been... They've been doing a little bit of a carousel, you know, with the DPS too. You know, Linkser is a hot and cold player, and he's been more cold. You know, it's still trying to get used to his new team, you know, sp spending the first three seasons with Houston. Um, you know, Tiro had a, today had a crazy uh, 6K, you know, it was a 5K blade, and then he finished off the last one after it um, on Genji today, but it was still on the map that they lost. So... You know, I I think that that DPS duo for Vancouver has a lot of, you know, has a lot of potential. But you know, th the tank's still trying to figure it out. You know, I think FRD is a really nice player. Um, you know, Ch Chang Six. Um, you know, obviously still trying to get his footing a little bit. Um, but I, I just their back line just doesn't f quite feel synergized with the rest of the team right now. And Atlanta's just gonna honestly probably just steamroll them over. Um, you know, with a very tanky, rushy comp. They're as rushed as you can get without Ryan, I guess. So, yeah, three oh four Atlanta. And then we've got Dallas taking on San Francisco. So, this one and then Atlanta Gladiators are definitely the matchups to watch this week for me. Um, can San Francisco get their revenge from the May Melee, where, like I said, Dallas, you know, knocked them out pretty handily um, in the qualifier. And even though they're the May Melee champs, I'm going to go San Francisco here. I trust Krusty just so much. Um, and while I, I've been, you know, I've been saying for a few weeks now, this isn't the San Francisco of the last few years. I don't see them dominating the whole league like they have. 
Um, I don't think their synergy is quite as good with, you know, with losing Rascal and with losing Moth. Um, but they obviously still have so many good players, you know. I think Smurf is going to be the difference. You know, playing a lot of Arisa, he's... For me, he's probably the best in the league. Um, you know, we saw how good he was in Season 2 playoffs, you know, with the double shield. Um, and I think that it's going to be close. It's going to be back and forth. You know, we're going to see some big plays. You know, we're going to see Straker go off. We're going to see, you know, the DPS duos from uh, Dallas go nuts too. See if we see any pine, maybe. Um... But like I said, in the end, I like San Francisco just because I trust their coaching staff so much. You know, it's such a veteran team that it's going to be a revenge game. You know, Atlanta barely beat them in the playoffs season two, knocked them to losers bracket. Next time they play, San Francisco just mops the absolute floor with them. So, um, well, I don't think that'll happen in this case. Dallas is going to put up a great fight because they are on a roll and they're a great team. But I got the defending, the two-time defending champs in a very, very tight one. So, there are the predictions for week number seven. Again, this will be week number two of the June Joust. Some teams will be done after this uh, after this week, you know, and then obviously uh, there will be more of them that have to finish in week number eight. So, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, you know, any big upsets, any teams you think are going to make a surprise run to their, um, you know, to the, to the knockout uh, rounds. I'm curious. Do you think Valiant will look kind of like a pro team? Um, who knows? Um, but as always, thank you guys very much for watching. Again, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I think we're gonna, you know, I hope we get some upsets again like last week because those are super fun. You know, nah, the three the three Overwatch, you know, it's cool sometimes, but, but it gets old. So hopefully we get some super close matchups in this weekend but other than that i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend enjoy yourselves um it weather sucks where i am right now but you know, hopefully it's you know, it's getting better over the next couple of days so um yeah end of end of may try to get out and you know stress the old legs it's been it's been doing me a lot of good these last few weeks when i can get out and about but other than that i'll see you guys in the next one